Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? You set it up, as I think Mark said the other day. Yeah, and, um, oh, the music's a bloody bit loud. I can't even hear myself talk. But yeah, I've been working on my camera, my webcam. I've got it to work, but I still need to sort out the settings. So I've been playing around with it a bit, a little bit. I thought I'd do a live stream just to um, check it out. A surprise live with our buddy G. I appreciate you guys being here. Obviously, it's a little bit random. Didn't really plan it. I just was mucking around, as I said, with the webcam. I got it to work. So there's probably not a huge difference. Maybe it's a little less pixely, but I still need to go into the the webcam and sort of just work out all the all the whatever whatever it's sunday night i see king g and king paul but yeah i thought i'd just do one on this channel see how much you know see how many people join in obviously normally i stream to funkin hungry and um, this channel and you know i want to sort of put more content on this channel even though i put all the live streams come to this channel and eventually will stay at or stay on this channel just going to throw it on Facebook, see if anyone else joins. But yeah, I obviously want to build this channel up. And because of daylight savings as well, I walked a little bit earlier, even though it's still pretty late. So I'll probably start walking a little bit earlier so I can try to get a few more live streams in. Sipping tea like Kermit. Cheers, everyone. But yeah, I'm still... So I'm still working on this channel. You know, I'm, I've kind of come up with different logos and I've got, you know, the, the back banner at the moment is just saying, don't forget to subscribe to try and get some, you know, to try to get some more people to join the channel. I did make this subscribers only. So, you know, if anyone does find this, they'll have to sub to chat and all that. So, yeah. Sorry about that, Paul. First Monday stream of this year. Well, Roger's getting a little bit in a little bit early. I, I might, I probably will stream tomorrow, but I'll do that on all like Funkin' Hungry and this channel. But I will be doing some more Untitled with G and, and you know, like, like we've spoke about on some of the other live streams, eventually I plan to see if I can get other guests. I mean, I love, you know, Mark and Roger and stuff. Obviously, if they want to join in, they're always welcome and anyone else. But I might see if they, I can get some people that I haven't had on, on live before. You know, a few people, like I was speaking to a guy the other day and he was like, oh, we need to have a chat because he's interested in, you know, just mutual topics. Like some of the topics that I get in, into when I, you know, go on my rants. But uh, yeah, I said, oh, you know, welcome to have a chat anytime. And then he said something about, oh, you know, we should do a podcast or something like that. And I said, well, yeah, I do have, you know, YouTube channels. And obviously this is what the G channel is going to be. It's going to be less of a niche, less, you know, food or hobby related. It would just be more life related and you know we can people can just you know shoot the shit or whatever they say people can just talk what they want and um what i was saying before is um you know we might have like i've always wanted to do interviews so even people like mark and roger and even if styles he wants to ever jump on or whatever you know i wouldn't mind doing kind of it, it won't be really like it won't be really strict like it's not like you know you're under pressure but i might do a little bit more interview style i mean i kind of do that up late with g sometimes if we have quite a few people if a new person comes on i tend to try to let them talk and if a topic comes up obviously i want to include everyone or if there is a new person i want i want them to you know try to speak or so the audience and even myself if i don't know them can get to know them and they can just share their interests but yeah when it comes to like the interview even if it's roger or mark and we if we do something like that you know like they can 
and like obviously mucks into his steam trains and he's gone into that quite a lot but you know where i can kind of ask some questions and then that live stream once it's finished it'll be on the channel and i can kind of market market it or promote it as an interview with like you know and i said that about like mrs austin and ryan and whatnot you know that um i can kind of interview them but also it's a way to push their channel and push their content so anyone that does find this channel can you know i can direct them to other people's channels and it's just helping to promote the community and also on this uh, i probably will do shorts or uh, pre-recorded videos eventually and as i say that will be you know less um obviously not necessarily food related or hobby related it would just be you know if i go places that aren't really going to suit funk and hungry like if i i don't know if hey what's going on cody so if um if like i was saying well in south australia i could show off some landmarks i can show off different places and you know it'd be be pretty interesting and then i can kind of if i go if i go and do a food review at a location if the location is near somewhere i can kind of do you know a little bit more content and that that behind the scenes or that me sort of doing other stuff can come on this channel i mean if it is i did have an idea on funk and hungry to do like funk in the wild where it was kind of a little bit more vloggy stuff but then it will if it's on funk and hungry obviously it will have some sort of food or drink related to it but yeah you know and if anyone's been around for a while which most of you guys have one of the reasons i did start this channel was because the the live stream started getting pretty rowdy and stuff on funk and hungry and started becoming less funk and hungry and just you know everyone having a good time or getting lit or getting a little bit crazy and stuff so it's one of the reasons that originally this channel was started so i don't know if it was like maybe september august i reckon that i started this channel and you know it's just eventually it became where i would put the live streams after they would go live on funkin hungry <sighs> but yeah you know like I, I yeah i appreciate you all you guys being here and I, I did wonder you know if i'd be talking to myself or whatever which is still something i kind of need to get used to anyway you know can't always have people there or can't Cheers, Roger. I um, make might make it. Yeah, you know, anytime you feel like it, you can. Anyone can. You know, like it was. It's, it's good that Cody's starting to join in. He's doing his own live streams now, which is always good to see. You know, like Rod, that happened to Roger, Mark, and Miss Austin, and so on. You know, like it's always good to see everyone doing live streams. But also, it's really good when we all get together and do them. So you know, Stalzy or whatever is always welcome anytime he wants to anytime i mean even at first if you want to leave the camera off you if you wanted to come on have a chat you leave your camera off you can just still have a chat but if you you know a bit nervous when it comes to that and then when you feel a little bit more confident you can turn on your camera if you want and, you know see how you go yeah so this channel has 34 subs which isn't a huge amount but then you know, I do know some other channels that have less subs and more content, like they, you know, do a little bit more content. But, you know, I'm grateful for everyone being here and everyone that has subbed to the so far. But I'm sure once I start putting out more content that it will start growing. You know, it's like the hobby channel where I haven't really done that much on it. You know, last year I didn't do that much. This year I've done just, you know, a handful of videos but um you know that's still slowly growing just from and that just kind of proves if you do some half decent content the channel can grow by itself a little bit so g the hyper sapien is on 808 subs which you know isn't too bad for a channel that i've had for a few years but a channel that i've neglected a little bit 
and obviously I've just been kind of going ham, you know, hard on not that kind of hard on Funkin' Hungry just to really, and you know, it is paying off a little bit, you know, it got monetized the end of last year and now I'm just slowly trying to build my subs, trying to build, like, make good content, you know, just improve that content. I guess if you leave the camera off, you can be naked and nobody would know. Well, yeah, if you want to, you know, if something, if something arises or, you know, if you get a little bit aroused, then you won't have to get shy about it. Yeah, so, you know, I'm always happy to uh, promote everyone else, especially the people that help me on on my live streams. You know, but they wouldn't be what they are without, you know, Roger and Mark especially. So, um, I'm, and I'm always happy to promote everyone. And even people like Brad or whatever, who's only been around for a little bit, but, you know, he's a great bloke and he, he um, yeah, deserves to have a successful channel and i do know it takes a while especially when i did my first channel so with funk and hungry being my second channel i already learned from g the hyper sapien but i did have uh, people in the hobby community help me on g the hyper sapien a little bit you know like a, a few people encouraged me to do it a few people so i already had like a few people supported and that was back when i was clueless didn't know how to edit, didn't really know how to speak on camera, didn't really know, you know, my arsehole from my ear hole. So, you know, like learning from that. But then when I got onto Funkin' Hungry, because the hobby stuff, I started doing, they call it talking or, you know, presenting on camera instead of doing it, you know, where it's just my hands or just on the product that I'm working on. So I did a little bit of that, but then doing funk and hungry the early stages you know i was a little bit new to food reviews and stuff like that so I, it's like sometimes when you first start i feel like you try to be a bit too polished you know like you almost try to be like you're reading the reading the news or reading you know or telling the weather or whatever it's like you try to be a little bit too polished a little bit too professional or just serious and, you know, after a while, it's like, I did kind of make jokes. I think the first video I did was the birthday McFlurry. And I was, you know, that's where I came up with McFlurry soup. And, you know, I was still making jokes and all that stuff. But obviously, it's developed over time. Yeah, appreciate that, Roger. I've noticed it as well just by obviously edit editing all those videos. It's... You know, I go back to those old ones and sometimes you're like, what the hell was I, you know, just what was I thinking or whatever, but that's how it is. Oh, I've done 13 minutes already. I have to struggle to get up to the one hour, then I'll rush off to TikTok. Yeah, no worries, Roger. And I'll read your comment in a second, Cody. Sorry, I, I jumped the queue a little bit there, Cody, but I'll get to you. Uh, yeah, so Star was just saying, I actually watched some early Funkin' Hungry the other day and your presenting style has changed. You're more relaxed now. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you, you don't even realise, uh, maybe it's a little bit of anxiety, but, you know, like, as, as you said, it's more relaxed. So um, you don't even realise, like, you know, you're being a little bit uptight or you're being a little bit, too serious or whatever but just after doing like you know i've probably done a good i know i've done a few hundred videos but some of them would be shorts Sh who wears short shorts but um yeah you you just sort of get used to it a lot after over time so uh cody's saying my new laptop is scheduled to arrive but i can't even speak tonight it's probably because I've been walking 
because before I got on, I was sweating. I, you know, wiped my brow with a towel and stuff. I'm like, ah. Uh, so yeah, my new laptop is scheduled to arrive between this coming Thursday, 11th, Monday, 15th. So if it does get here before the week and I shall jump on the panel again. Oh, that sounds good to me. It's funny, you had a few issues, but when you was when you stayed on screen for a little bit, it seemed to fix itself. But then, um, like when you was on the screen when there was a lot of us, it wasn't too bad, but the end of the last one there, yeah, I think he was about 10 minutes behind or a good five minutes behind because, you know, uh, Mark, I know Mark was asking you a question. Like he was asking you stuff and speaking to you. And then later on, <laughs> he was like laughing at stuff that happened a while ago. But yeah, we've all had problems with our devices. You know, Roger used to always have to update. I've had bro problems with my webcams. I've came on lives and I've had audio issues at times. I remember there was one time on good old Robbo's bloody live and um, there was, I don't know, there was an echo or something, but I didn't hear it on my end. And he's like, oh, you know, like, who's that? And like, then they, then we all muted and he realized it was me. And he was actually getting like he always does angry, like, oh, you know, at first he was laughing and he's like, oh, can you fix it? And then like, you know, because I was taking the piss a bit, he's like, oh, you know, I'm going to have to get rid of you if you don't fix it. He is more relaxed and more confident and more jokes. Roger always had to update the software on his old computer, yeah. Well, that's one reason I didn't do lives. Like, I wanted to do them on my hobby channel for a while because, you know, like, I, I watched a lot of people that done lives painting miniatures and just talking and stuff, and I always joined in with them. I always found it interesting, but I always thought, oh, yeah, you know, I make, make videos, I'd love to do lives. And then it wasn't last December, so it was, like, two Decembers ago, two Christmases, I got my laptop. And uh, it did take me a little bit um, to do live, you know, going on all those plonkers lives, you know, all the all the people I took shots at on that last on the menu cheeseburger review, you know, all those guys that I was on their lives. And then, you know, after a while, I realized that I could just do it myself, really. Yeah, the old the old classic vlogger, the old classic crusty bum. I got a new one and doing well so far. Yeah, I know you had a bit of issues when at first, but but um, yeah, you got used to it, and also you, like Roger is really good at speaking on camera and stuff. Like I even reckon like Roger's done it for a while, and he's always been good at presenting. But I even feel like he's you know. Roger and Robbo, when they do their videos, their food and drink reviews, I just feel like Roger's definitely come out of his shell a lot more, which is great because, you know, his personality's coming across on his videos and stuff a lot more. Yeah, excuse me for a second. I, I always get so many notifications when I'm on here. Ah, oh, Roger was bloody hilarious when he came on. He was um, he was great, great to chat, and you know, we were sort of speaking about all sorts of stuff, like we always do on lives. You know, when Roger came on, it was definitely like a, a huge highlight of the stream. <laughs> Robo's not himself when he's hungry or funkin' hungry. He needs a Snickers or even a hot chip. <laughs> yeah, those Mr. T's Snicker ads. Like, what is it? Uh, you, you're not yourself without a Snickers or whatever that quote was. The vlogger, yes, he is a bit <laughs> grouchy, I think that's... And had potential to be a good YouTuber, but blown it. Yeah, but the thing is as well, like, he was a fairly good host because he would allow people to talk. 
but also that being said he kind of relied on people's like at first you're like oh he's quite good at you know controlling the live stream he let allowing people to talk but then you realize when he's about by himself he just gets nervous and he doesn't have that same sort of whatever like he can't control it when he's by himself so he started realizing that he was just relying on other people to be decent and that's why when he started neglecting mrs austin and you know he kept on running off to TikTok so he can stare and grunt at the camera you know i'd stay back and have a chat with her <clears throat> stay back and have a chat with her and just said you know like you're kind of carrying the channel she was saying about how she wanted to stop for a while she wanted to work on her own content this that and the other and i was saying well yeah you know she's good at what she does why don't you do your own content and you know the fact that she really helped him and all the rest of it woke up early and stuff to do that it's just like you start realizing <laughs> welcome brad um but yeah you know like and then she told me a lot of stuff that he done dodgy stuff he done and then i started you know like me being me i just felt like i had to you know you'd like as she, as she said at one stage i gave her kind of the confidence or courage to stand up for herself and like you know say enough's enough but yeah i, I definitely started finding out some uh, quite a lot more once i spoke to her and other people that's it styles i need to um have a hot chip i need to get um I need to grow my beard a little bit more so I look like a homeless person. And then, you know, like Luke Skywalker, I need to have all the beer. A beer? I was going to say beard, but then I stopped and wanted to say milk, and somehow that came out. So, yeah, I'm doing doing great. Roger was hilarious. Robo5 Life is confident more. I helped him out of his shell. Yeah, well, I think the best thing about both of you doing reviews, you kind of feed off each other a little bit you know like there's a little bit of banter back and forth which like i, I don't sometimes i don't know if robo like he kind of it seems like he sometimes wants to cut the review short or you know but that's if he doesn't know that's some of the best parts of the review like that back and forth banter and you know like it makes it really funny like the different personalities talking about the same product and stuff so what's all this about then scottish police officer voice yeah this is just this is just a, a g an untitled with g haven't done one for a while but yeah for brad that just popped on like the coco pops I was just saying that you know i want to do a little bit more content for this i was just talking about the future of this channel and you know having a little bit more structure with some of these streams even though the untitled with g is just whatever this is but yeah we'll still be having up late with g and just to get my watch hours up i'll be doing it on funkin hungry pretty much until i get my get to the point where i can get paid for ad revenue so my actual pre-recorded content can earn and it's not going to earn much but it's just another goal that i want to do so i'm about halfway there just under halfway there need four thousand watch hours again because for some reason as soon as i got monetized my watch hours went back down to like not that much which was a little bit shitty at least on this channel you know because it's not monetized and stuff i can be a little bit more rowdy but i'm probably less rowdy than i normally am so go f you know work that one out the logger he, he sure did because i'm like oh yeah you know robo this <laughs> robo the disabled lumberjack lumberjacker i know paul had a few drinks we talking about mr coco pops i'm sure he would i'm sure he'd lie about it but when stars mentioned that 
you know, it was so boring, like most of, well, pretty much all of his videos. So I had to, you know, fast forward through all the boring shit, which was basically the whole video. I just watched the intro. I watched a little bit of the struggle. The struggle was real. Then, you know, I watched the ending. And he's like, boop, boop, spitting them everywhere. Boop, boop. And then he'd done his little gay intro, uh, outro really quickly, like, boop, 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 boop. and then you see him, like, you see him getting up and moving. So you know that he went and, you know, the old crusty bum went and, went and you know, put his crusty bum on the toilet. Ahoy, the pirate. Oh, Brad even got Brad even got a winky face. I don't know if I've got a winky face before. I can see he is in a chair. I can smell epic social anxiety with Mr. Coco Pop. That's oh, not even social anxiety. I think it's just like, you know. The funny thing is, that video is the first video I think I've seen in about a year that he actually smiled and laughed. And I have a, you know, my, my spider senses were tingling. And I reckon it's because he was with a support worker. And he told me, and as we all know, who unfortunately knows too much about the guy, he only works with female support workers. Because, you know, if if they need to get little, little, um, little Johnson out, I'm guessing he doesn't want, you know, a man handling his man handling his manhood. A man handling his manhood, that's what I should say. Which I guess is kind of understandable in a way, but you know, still just all weird and but yeah, I saw him chuckling and you know, he was like he thought he was a hero, like I'm gonna eat these cocoa pops. I'm only gonna put a little bit of milk in first. And then after I said that, I'm gonna put in basically the whole carton of milk. Because you know, it's smart to make them all soggy. You know, the first few bites, it's like, it's like back in my days when I used to get the old Mary Jane, you know, I used to do the old puff, puff, pass, the, you know, HR puff and stuff. And, you know, I used to have like fairly big bowls of cereal. It's like everyone knows if you overfill it or you put too much that it starts getting the old soggy bottom. Speaking of soggy bottoms, we all know when he's on Fet Life. He likes a soggy bottom. Oi, oi, Cody boy. I tend to draw it a bit and told Robo5 Life to do shorts a bit, but he is a bit worried about shorts. He might make it too short. Well, it has to be under it has to be under 60 seconds. And really, like I've made shorts from my long pre-recorded stuff, and I just kind of it's like you're making another video, really, but you've already got the material there. And, I mean, I know Brad does a lot of shorts and he does lots of different topics. But, yeah, obviously I'm fucking hungry or I've even done shorts on my hobby channel. It's like you just want to get to the point even quicker. So you just want to, yeah, just put just a few little bits. And if I'm if I'm making jokes, you know, I'll try and incorporate that. But there's there's plenty of times that I've had to take out a lot of good stuff you know, like, say it, I get it down to two minutes, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. But then I need to get it down even more, so I ended up having to take out some of the stuff that I feel like would have made a good short. But it just, it's just like a lot of stuff. It takes a little bit of practice to get it all how you want it. But the only way you're going to learn is by doing it. You know, like, he's worried about if it's too short or whatever. I mean... You can test it, and worst case scenario, you can delete it or put it private. So you can just see yourself. If you put it on private, then you yourself can go back and look at it, and you can kind of see what mistakes you've made, or you can see improvement. Because as time goes on, I'll probably make some stuff on Funkin' Hungry, members only, right? just certain videos, maybe old videos or whatever. You know, videos that I'm not that happy with or whatever, or if I go revisit one, like, you know, like Maccas and stuff bring out the same burgers all the time. Sometimes I might do like a, I mean, other YouTubers have done it. When I've watched like Dame Drops and Ken Domic and stuff, you know, when the when the burgers it comes out, you know, the next year or a couple of years later it comes back, they do another review on it. 
and you come with a different opinion because especially me i was given you know mac is jack as clackers like quite high ratings or you know wasn't necessarily giving them shit but over to after a while and me trying more places and me enjoying small businesses and wanting to support the community more so than these big franchises that i mean Maccas and stuff doesn't need any more promotion. You know, there's a multi-million or billion or whatever dollar industry or franchise. Just giving them free promotion, you know, they don't really deserve it in a way. So I'd rather support small local businesses that probably don't have the that much money to promote themselves. You know, they'll promote themselves on Google and Facebook and stuff because every man and their dog has a social medias these days you know like a lot of these like adverts aren't the same anymore like people aren't really watching free to air tv anymore so it's probably a little bit of a waste of them paying for adverts to promote their businesses these days you know like 10 20 years ago that was what everyone was doing because everyone was sitting in front of the idiot box looking at it so it's a good way to promote your business these days it's not necessarily pointless, but we'll continue doing live streams on my new channel and put out other content on that in the near future. Yeah, me and, me and Cody will be competing with our new channels. No, I'm only joking, but, you know, like, Brad has more subs and stuff than on the old G channel at the moment. The old Brad is saying he's I'm a support worker, behavioral analyst. Well, I like to think I am as well, but I just don't get paid for that shit. I remember that hot support worker Brooke. So do I. Cause I was um, you know, without even without being too weird, I was, you know, try I'm like, ah, oh, what happened to her? And Oh, I don't really want to talk about it. Like he told me a little bit about they fell out, but he's like, I don't want to really talk about it. I'm like, yeah, you know, you probably tried to, he probably like slapped her on the ass or whatever. And then she turned around and, you know, like put him in his place, which for someone like the vlogger is quite easy to put him in his place. She might be too old for him, Paul. True. I think any woman with a pulse you know he's he would like pretty sure as well he was or it's probably a cover-up i'm pretty sure he was saying he was into old women when i had a chat to him once and then you know i found out that he was more into the young ones my shorts of drawings are getting heaps of hits i've just been called out to do 300 push-ups so i did a short telling him to get bent that's the way to do it. And Jerry, I am loving your drawing videos. Definitely. Exactly right, Roger. Yeah, shorts are super easy. Costs nothing to try. Can always delete them too. Brooke was a cute woman though, to be honest. So was to be honest. And yes, she was. She seemed like a very lovely person. And that's why I remember her. You know, I don't really like talking about him, but it's just relevant to the conversation that we're going into and i think most people by now know that i think he's a complete twat but um yeah i said to him on those old videos but i i basically knew what was happening but i just wanted him to see if he saw my point of view and i was saying to him you know like what basically when he recorded this with this brooke woman that everyone's talking about he, he was smiling. He seemed like a lot more clean shaved. He didn't seem to look like, you know, a total like Dero. And I said to him, like, what the hell happened to you, man? I'm like, you know, like you just stopped caring about yourself and me having depression and stuff. I know how it can be. You can slide into that, you know, without even kind of knowing when you're feeling a little bit shit, you know, a couple of a week, a couple of weeks and you just realize that you haven't necessarily been looking after yourself and you don't really care when you're feeling like crap because that's the last thing you know but then it's, it's 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 one of those vicious cycles when you're feeling like shit you need to do stuff to start feeling good and even if that's like something like going out and getting a haircut even buying a new shirt or whatever it be just do little things just to like give you that little 
you know, that little serotonin, that little sort of endorphin kick, you know, just to slowly try to recover from being feeling like shit. But I was saying to him, you know, what happened? But basically I knew is because he was trying to impress this Brooke woman, you know, like he was trying to be laughing and being funny or whatever he was you know, funny. But uh, yeah, I said like, you know, we need to get that that old you back. You need to, you need to like go back to that and work out what was happening in that time that was making you feel a lot more positive. Because I'm, you know, he's on the NDIS, he's on disability. I'm like, you're not. He told me he wasn't getting therapy, and I'm like, what are you spending your money on? It's like, you need to go and see a therapist because you know you're still crying about. You know all the stuff that he used to cry about i work with nurses oh i remember the nurse in nightmare on elm street when i was a young lad i definitely enjoyed that i reckon it might have been dream warriors in the mental hospital i think they had the nurse and the nurse when yeah because it had this dude who was mute and he liked the nurse but then obviously when he fell asleep he, the, the nurse like stripped down and was pretending that well, you, you thought he was getting with it and then you realized he was sleeping and it was freddy krueger and then like the the hell pit opens up and was pulling him in <sighs> plenty of them are hot yeah i was a little bit hot earlier on i had to turn the fan on to get a little bit of circulation happening you know, the kind of circulation that normally happens when you see a hot nurse. No point. No point. During women who earn the same money as you won't work. No point dating. Uh, so, yeah, you have to go out and get all those poor women, you know. But then they, then if you get the poor women, they all want a handout. Always support local businesses. Man, I must be like... I'm about five minutes behind in the chat. Always support local businesses when you can. McDonald's is already a global powerhouse with lots of money. Yeah, lots of money and st the food's getting worse and worse. My brother earns the same as his female partner, Brad. They have been together for about five years. Yeah, take that, Brad not seeing it's not saying it's impossible roger just not my thing i'm looking for a homeless chick with cooking skills yeah one that knows how to you know choose me the one that knows how to cook a rat on the on, on like a dumpster you know with the fire coming out yeah it depends on what kind of women you like my client right now has a thing for hot workers, but he's paralyzed. Oh no, that'd be terrible. Support workers will not tolerate sleaze bags. They are very liberal, as I said. Yeah, hence um, Robo Disabled Vlogger. Ugh, now I've caught up to the the chat it's always it always feels awkward when i catch up to it because i'm going on random rants and then when i catch up i'm like what rant was i on i'm gonna turn that music off because it's distracted me a little bit might see if um robbo's message me he normally messages me every night about now Yeah, it feels weird to have it like i appreciate you guys being here but yeah i mean it is a late stream even if i did it i'm fucking hungry i'm probably not going to get that many people join anyway oh. oh the snake is coming out Yeah, I probably because it's daylight savings now. I'll probably try to walk. Well, I will. Or the plan is to try to walk more early because I prefer walking at night time. It's just more peaceful and relaxing and shit for me. So, 
start um, walking probably, you know, like more six, seven, try and get home and smash dinner and then do more live streams. I reckon tomorrow it might be the return of Monday Night Madness, though. We'll see what madness we can come up with. G is the master of YouTube. Yeah, that's why I've got this background, you know, like, it's like my brain when it explodes. But yeah, we'll do a Monday Night Madness, see what I can come up with. You know, if anyone wants to join, anyone here, anyone that's not here probably won't know about it because they won't be listening to me right now. But yeah, I'll bring Monday Night Madness back and see if I can keep that going because, you know, like for Brad that has hasn't probably been around for the Monday Night Madness really, used to have that going. A lot of times I did stream on Fridays for a bit and then on um, Saturdays and then Roger started joining me on Saturdays but on the Friday it would be myself a lot. Sometimes we'd have like Mick on wheels and Sammy and a few other people join. But yeah, I'll see if I can get the Monday, see if I can get the, keep the Saturdays going. Obviously if I do get more busy I might miss some times, but I, tr I tried not to miss them for quite some time. And um, I do want to start streaming on my hobby channel, so I'll probably do that on a Wednesday. And I don't know if I'll do it during the day. Well, well normally these days I'm normally going out on Wednesday. So, yeah, it might be like early evening, maybe like around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. I don't know, either way I'll work it out as the time goes on, but need to build up my watch hours on my hobby channel and I'll see if I can get my webcam to work and have to work out how I can do it so I can paint on stream. So yeah, I can do my little my little painty painty paint on stream. Paul is the master of Facebook and Brad master of TikTok. Don't even think Brad has TikTok, does he? Roger will be the master of TikTok. Oh, you mean that type of snake? Yeah, it's just my charger. But yeah, I obviously had to make a stupid little joke about it. 6.20 and it was already dark or was dark or already, was already dark already. There you go. For some reason I got a bit tongue tied with that one. Must have been me, you know, wrestling my snake before. But yeah, no, maybe around half six, we'll go in on seven, walk, and then get home. And either if it's if it's not eight, it'll be at eight thirty. Try and do it as early as I can. I was going to do eight thirty tonight, but then just when I came home, I was dripping with sweat. Had to get the old Kermit, sipping on the old uh, Yorkshire jam on toast. Review on Funk and Hunger if you want to go check it out. Wink, wink. But yeah, I had to get the tea into me. Monday Night Madness. Been funny Monday ones. Yeah, especially when all the shit happened with like Robbo and then later on it shit hit the fan with like Taz does and stuff you know they I did a quite a few random really ridiculous streams on Monday like when I had the the gauntlet the infinity gauntlet might might have to bring that back for the first Monday night madness I might bring my infinity gauntlet back out see if see who's I'm gonna snap yeah, one of one of the um, pictures was two Aussie and Robo the disabled vlogger in in the Infinity Stones. <laughs> so I might do, maybe I might redo that picture and um, add a few more people to my Infinity Gauntlet because I remember I was making jokes. So who else is going to be in my Infinity Gauntlet? You know, we had two Aussie and we had Robo the disabled vlogger. I think that was it but now we've got a few more people to add might even bring some of the memes the memes were a little bit private when i created them you know maybe i might make them public we'll see but yeah i made and 
and funny enough i was given p diddy shit before before everyone else was doing memes you know like there was some memes that had like the disabled vlogger rolfus tazdaz and it had two aussie and then i'd put p diddy and r kelly in it <laughs> actually i reckon i might actually have one of the memes on here that i could do a little sneak peek well you know for the the people that are here right now you can, you can be blessed with the disgust and stuff i come up with when i'm doing crazy stuff <laughs> oh man so i'll take myself out in a second so you can see the background once it loads Uh, that even changed back. What the hell? What is happening? Somehow changed. Oh, that's because of my background. If I go like this, you'll see them creep in. Uh, yeah. You see, you see them behind me doing what they do best. But anyway. Uh, uh, enough of that we'll get back to we'll get back to the chat oh, december 18 yeah sounds about right because i know i was really pushing the live streams to get monetized i needed the watch hours and then around december i slowed down had a little bit of a break from live streams for about a week maybe two uh, I think I had a week break from content and then two weeks for, um, I know I've done like uh, New Year's and Christmas. I think you were right. Good old Mick and Sammy. Yeah. I think unfortunately, you know, when the, when the stuff happened with Robbo, a lot of people were sort of in agreeing that what he was doing to people was wrong and then people kind of went back on their word a little bit and that's how issues started same with paddy j well yeah unfortunately rolf is so far up paddy j's ass that i highly doubt um paddy j will be speaking on to me or on live streams anymore Yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure, Roger. I mean, he's never said to me that he has an issue with you, but I know a lot of times when we get that feeling that someone is treating us different, it's not nice. So, you know, if you feel that way, that's understandable. It's just like me with those other guys when I started getting like a weird feeling that they were treating me different. I kind of knew. And then when Rolfus and kept on i don't know t commenting on two aussie stuff and he kept on coming in the chat talking about two aussie like i just knew he was trying to bait me and you know annoy me and then he ended up leaving and blocking me on facebook when i said if someone treated you how two two aussie treated me and was like talking shit about like it, you know me me thinking that rolfers and taz does and stuff were getting along with me if someone was speaking shit about them, I wouldn't be going and supporting them and liking and commenting on their stuff. So it was just all, like, I just knew the more time went on and the more stuff they were doing, I just had that feeling that, you know, that shit's going to shit's gonna go down. Uh, Styles is saying he didn't know this. Roger saying he got along with Paddy. Yeah, well, I think Paddy Joe is a lovely bloke. Just unfortunately, he's known those other guys longer, and you know, they 
they're able to speak to him behind outside of YouTube. So yeah, and you know, obviously I've done some some crazy stuff like so yeah, obviously obviously I've done some crazy stuff to to bait the old Tasmanians. So Paddy Joe might see that as me causing issues, but the only time really I start fighting back is when the only time I start doing that sort of shit to people is when they do it to me. Can't believe some people actually went back on their word. Yeah, exactly. Especially when a lot of those people were saying how disgusted they were with his behavior long before even I did. You know, like I kept on giving him kind of the benefit of the doubt or whatever. Or, or Like I'm the type of person that feels like I can save or help people, you know, even people that are beyond saving. So, you know, I thought, I, you know, maybe if I give him some positive reinforcement and whatever, he might change or he might fix his problems. He might see that he's doing crazy shit and he should get help and, he should um, apologize or try to sort out the issues he's created. But you know, after Mrs. Austin and I mean, even even Mick and Sammy was talking about the some of the crazy shit he was doing, and you know, I don't know how much they speak to him, but because I remember Mick said once to me, and this is nothing against Mick, I don't have an issue with him myself, but. I did think a little bit differently when he said that um, oh, he doesn't have a, prob a problem with Robbo. He thinks he's a fuckhead or whatever, but he doesn't, you know. And it's like, and obviously the, the Tasmanians and stuff, they were all, oh, fuck Robbo. And then they felt sorry for him. And then they, you know, went on their back on their word and started licking his ass. <laughs> when that little Tazzy bloke what is this dog doing he's he's scratching himself but he's using the wall to he's like holding himself up in the wall and not keeping hearing him his claws go up and down on it ah oh, the young Tazzy twit came in and mass deleted messages and you banned them all together yes yeah he hasn't funny enough he hasn't been mentioned for a little bit i guess because i kind of know that deep down he was just being being told what to do by the other guys or he was trying to impress those other guys by doing stuff you know he's still a complete twat i think i said it on that stream i'm like you know like i'm, I'm like a oh, you know, I don't hate you, but, you know, what you're doing, you're being, like, you know, a complete fuckhead. So, you know, like, I mean, I don't hate any of them. Is that's, That would be, that would mean I would be, you know, too invested in it. Like, they don't mean that much to me to hate them. You know, hate them is like, you know, like, like even, even Joker, he doesn't hate Batman, even though Batman arrests him all the time and stuff, but. You know, like I don't hate them because they're not that important. But yeah, then Benji was what he done was like completely fucked really, but but yeah, the other ones like to me, Benji's less gutless because he actually said to me kind of how he felt. And Taz Daz did eventually on text messages, you know, because I had his number and when I tried to sort it out, he's like <laughs> I think I've got the messages still. He said like he hated me. Which I thought, ah, oh, that's a little bit bloody, you know, a little bit crazy. Like, I don't know if I deleted his number. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I said to him, how's Robbo's ass taste, Grandma Tazdaz? Another way to get your Macca's fix. Yeah, um, 
love um i'm like because he was saying oh he loves life and stuff because i'm like oh you just you know cry anyway i won't go into it too much but it's like like he's like yep i have a great life i'm and i'm like you don't like me all good like in other words if you don't like me it's all good and he's like no i hate you and put hate in capital letters no i hate you you weren't always this way the last robo stream changed you and it's sad I'm like no worries hate me and he's like typical reply i can't own up to anything I'm like own up to what good for you good luck with that i wish you the best I'm like you don't because you hate me but that's fine yes i do but i still wish you the best <laughs> like he was I know why he was doing that because then if he screenshots it, screenshots that and shows it to other people, he's making himself look good. Like he's trying to take the high, the high ground or whatever. You know, like he's trying to look like the, like he's, you know, like he's he's putting me in my place, but he's also you know being nice about it or whatever. And I can't remember what I said to him. Oh, I just I just didn't reply to that and then when he started commenting all over Robbo's stuff like giving him super chats and commenting on all of the stuff which I did call he will stop doing eventually once they were just doing that to annoy me they was just doing that to you know try and trigger me and now all that stuff kind of blown over they don't they don't comment on Robbo's stuff anymore But yeah, after you banned Benji, I celebrated with a drink with both you, both you and Roger. Yes. Yeah. I do have a little bit of a feeling that that Highland might have been someone they, someone they knew or like an account they used. Because I mean, funny enough, that person was trying to get involved and was speaking to us all. But then her or whoever they were, you know, aren't around anymore. But who knows? It's just it was it was hard to trust new people around that time. You know, like when new people was coming to the channel and trying to talk to us, I just had a feeling, you know, like I just it was hard to to know if it was one of them. Especially Robbo. I know Robbo would be the type of person because he told me on TikTok he has like a an account that he uses to look at people when they block him. So no doubt he has that on YouTube as well. They don't know you like we know you, G. You haven't changed at all. Yeah, well, as I said, Tazdaz was on the Fuck Robbo bandwagon way before I was. He had on Discord a private channel on discord and it was like robbo's a cunt but then he then he was worried when when he was promoting his discord more he was worried that people might see that even if it's private i'm pretty sure people can still see it but it's kind of got like a locked sort of uh, symbol so people can't see the content but they can see the name so then he said see you in the nt robo or something like that so he changed it slightly but it, mayhem rolfers and tazdaz they're all speaking hell shit about robo and that's how i know they spoke shit about other people on robo streams people that they basically spoke shit about most people the only person they didn't speak shit about was roger but um yeah they so, so I kind of, like, when they turned on me, I kind of knew their behaviour before they turned on me because I saw how they treated, like, how I saw how they would speak about other people. So I knew that w when all the stuff was happening, I knew they'd be watching my live streams because Taz, Daz and Mayhem used to watch them, Robbo's live streams, and they used to, you know, like, pick on people and just write it to each other in the, the, admin, the admin channel. And I always, like Mark and Mrs. Austin and Robbo, I always like stuck up for them at first. But then when Robbo started doing some crazy shit, then I, you know, stopped like defending him or whatever to them. 
And uh, like they just didn't like stuff. Like they didn't like when I started speaking to Mark about aliens. They're like, oh, you know, they thought that was all bullshit because they're not. I feel like their brains aren't, you know, developed enough to like to ponder to ponder the universe in that way. And I remember when I spoke to Nick, uh, Nick Mick about Buddhism because he's a Buddhist. I remember that I showed this little some. Uh, a friend from years ago sent this to me. It was like a little Buddha statue. But I remember when I was speaking to Mick about it, and I just, because it's on my desk, just with all my knickknacks. Uh, funny enough, I didn't even know it's still here because I've got so much paint and crap everywhere at the moment. And then they gave me shit about that, like, oh, you know, uh, oh, as if you have a little Buddha and stuff, and was like paying me out about it. And I can take people's shit. You're like, you know, I didn't like run off crying, but I reckon that's why they reckon I started changing just because when I would speak to them on live streams, like we would kind of just talk shit and give each other shit, you know, kind of like how mates do, you know, just like playful banter. But the more I feel like the more deeper I got and covering different topics and then having Mark and other people on that are interested in different stuff and speaking to them, they just didn't like it because as i said like they gave me shit about all these different things like oh you know like they didn't know that i'm can be serious or can get into different topics and i feel like they didn't like that and it's funny as well when i was doing the live streams you know it was that first me and taz Daz were going to rotate to get our watch hours up and then good old doofus he wanted to get in on it so it was going to be him and me rotating, but then they kept on, like, you know, not wanting to do live streams after a while because, oh, he, he had a – Grandma Taz Daz had a bad day and, you know, he didn't want to go on live stream or whatever. So I just started doing it more and more. And then, like we said, Mark and, you know, Mick and Sammy, who a lot of people that was on good old uh, Naked Vloggers streams wanted – they kind of wanted a place to still speak to each other and that's what i gave them and as time went on you know roger started joining me more coming up and having a drink or whatever and just enjoying himself and just became what it did and as i mentioned earlier this channel once upon a time was if one of us would stream when it started getting a little bit crazy, you know, if people had a few drinks and there was people were starting to get a little bit drunk and rowdy, I made this channel, which was the G spot once upon a time. And it was a place for everyone to come on and just get more lit because I obviously me trying to monetize Funkin' Hungry, I didn't want anything too crazy that might get me, you know, have a have a have a strike against me, them um them you know, strike the videos for inappropriate content or whatever. Yeah, well, that's it. And, you know, uh, pretty much everyone here has probably, I don't know if Brad's still here, but there's four people watching. And I know that, you know, I know there was four people here, but if there is a lurker, hello. I'm sure we have a certain lurker in the background. You know, Eden is sauce sandwiches but yeah those those memes everyone here on who's on the discord would have seen them and really that's just it seems a little bit childish but i mean lots of people make memes and it was just kind of my way and i knew that benji was going to start getting triggered because he did he did what a lot of people did like as i said i don't have anything against like mick and sammy but they started going on the group chat and just you saw them watching it all because their little profile would rock up and you know that they like reading it but not engaging in it but benji was doing that for a while as well until we blew up but that's happened with me with other people in life like other friends or whatever it's like you know you know shit's about to hit the fan and you're just kind of waiting for it. And then Benji ended up showing his true colors. And what I mean by that is when I had chats with Mrs. Austin after Robbo's live streams, and, you know, she would tell me all this stuff, Benji opened up and 
you know, he even cried and stuff and was telling telling myself and Mrs. Austin all this personal stuff. And I told him some personal stuff about me. And I wasn't necessarily getting upset because I'm pretty old right now. I've not I've dealt with my issues, but you know, there's still there some issues. But I opened up and told about them and all this different stuff and it was making him emotional because he was able to relate to some of the issues I've had when I was younger because he's gone through them as well. And, you know, I was like, and it's just, it's happened before. You show your vulnerable side, you show your sensitive side, you show your trauma or you talk about your trauma, you talk about stuff that's happened in life that's, you know, a little bit shit or what's made you who you are, but also you like you know like your your problems make you stronger once you push through and once you deal with them even though even though some stuff when when you're a kid you can't really deal with and that's the whole idea of trauma you know you like kind of carry that but you just need to learn how to cope with it the point i'm making is he used a lot of that stuff against me like you know that i have like depression that i don't work and other stuff so he um he took which as i said women have done that to me and you know people that you open up and confide in some of your deepest darkest they're not secrets but you know you like like pain pain that you carry your issues that you have and um you know they use it against you because they know in their mind that you've told them this stuff because it's hard for you to deal with or you, you know you you have struggles because of these these predicaments or these situations so yeah that's that's what made me lose respect to benji because he came on the group chat on facebook that a few of us uh, are a part of and he he attacked me and he because at first he's like oh everyone stop talking to like you know like I, i'm here i'm here and you, you're all giving role for shit um like you know that he's my stepdad and you know, like, can you stop basically talking shit about him? And basically, I'm like, well, because when me and Rolfus first had issues, Benji did send me a private message, and he's like, I'm not going to be able to take sides, and obviously Rolfus is his stepdad, so he's not going to be able to, you know. But he 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 didn't say that he sided with me, but he said, you know, like, basically, hopefully we can still be, like, friends or whatever. And, you know, at that time, I've, and I thought, oh, you know, that's pretty grown up and that's pretty, you know, like, and I didn't mind the bloke. But, yeah, when he went ahead and used, like, stuff that even made him emotional because me t just telling him about my past or telling him about issues I've had, as I said, he could relate to some of them even though he's only, like, 18, 19 so the stuff that I was going through when I was about his age, I was trying to guide him or help him just with his situation and just try to not make him, you know, like repeat stuff that's happened to me. You know, like if I can help someone not go, not go have the same problems or whatever, you know, if I could try and steer him in the right direction and then, um, you know, I feel like my job would have been complete. But as I said, he got emotional when I was telling my stories and he was getting emotional when he said some of his. And yeah, then he went ahead and just ruins that by just throwing all that stuff back in my face. Personal stuff will, us will all usually always be used against you later down the track. Well, exactly, that's exactly it. And it's happened in relationships you know when people get angry and i try <clears throat> i'm not perfect but i try not to do that i try not to use people's demons against them you know like especially when people are really fired up and they're throwing all that they're throwing all your bullshit back in your face like you know like a monkey at a zoo like picking his ass and throwing his shit in your face it's like i when when they're the most angry when they're like a gorilla rampaging remember rampage remember rampage that game that video game was sick anyway when when people are that at their most angriest they are also vulnerable because obviously they're so hated they're not their minds all 
over the place. It's a perfect time for me to like, you know, they're they're spewing venom at me. They're spitting all this shit towards me. Most of the time, obviously, it's going to make someone a little bit angry if you if you if they're bringing up all your past personal traumas and throwing it in your face. What normally happens? Normally, is what expect is expected, and normally, what people do is do that back to them, and then you just have two fucking people shouting at each other like Godzilla and King Kong. You know, you like you just have these two titans just shouting and spitting and acting like you know a baby spitting out his dummy, like oh. I'm not going to be happy until my dummy's back. But what I try to do, and as I said, I'm not perfect, and I'm not like, you know, blowing smoke up my own ass. I'm just, you know, speaking how it is. I try to I try to be, like, positive to them, and that tends to make people more angry because, as I said, they're, ex they're expecting, and a lot of times, and, you know, this isn't, this isn't necessarily, like, basically women do this quite a lot. You know, like I don't want to put every female in the one in the one box, but a lot of times, you know, when you have a fight with a female, especially females that have trauma, that have been abused by partners, either physically or verbally, and when I've had relationships or whatever with people like that, they're expecting you to like be physical, or they're expecting you to be verbally abusive, but they're not used to. And they don't know how to handle when you're just like being calm and not doing that back and just like you know like i know i've said before to pete when people have been like that i've said okay you know after 10 minutes of them screaming it's like okay you've had your say now like you know give it a rest now like you know calm down and yeah they don't know how to handle it they just keep them going and not that I would, ex not that I'd wish any person, like any, especially a female, to get uh, have a man put their hands on them. You can kind of understand how men that can't control themselves, and then they're spewing, saying all your, all all your traumas. They're they're saying all the negative stuff about you, stuff they know is going to hurt you. If a man can't control his anger, can't control and hasn't worked on his trauma is going to get up and eventually smack him because you know they're just going on and on and on and on and they're not they're not they're not stopping so as i said it takes like it's almost like a bit of training or like you're practicing to it's like a little bit of mindfulness or just a little bit of you know you you're trying to control yourself it's a pretty good lesson or that you can learn by trying not to take someone's toxic bullshit and being affected by it so it's like a good way to learn patience and try to keep calm you know when because a lot of these people as well that are being that personal about you the reason they're being like that is because they have feelings for you either you had a friendship with them or a relationship with them or you are in a relationship with them or you are in a friendship with them you know so they they have these strong feelings like they basically love you or really like you or whatever is the reason they're doing that and you know when that when they do that to you a lot of times once they calm down they'll kind of realize and they'll still want to be in a relationship or they'll still want to be your friend or whatever you know like it's like normally if someone hates you they're not going to give you that much energy they're not gonna you know they're not they're not gonna you know like if like i was saying if i hated any of those people they're not that important to me for for me to you know like uh, but one way that i and just possibly because i used to when i was younger used to do hip-hop rap and when we was at school when we when we was in class when we should have been learning we used to write raps like rap battle but we used to write it on a piece of paper and pass it around the classroom so sometimes like you do a rap battle and you'd like give someone shit and you like write it and then you pass it to the next person or someone else has wrote it and will hand it to me you'll read what they say and a rap battle is like you want to get one over someone so if they're calling you on oh, you know whatever you try to spin that back on them so it's so i'm kind of like used to dealing with 
people like with humor so you know when all that shit happened one of my ways to deal with it which i'm still have kind of done tonight is like you know come up with funny stuff that's going to make other people laugh but then if the person that it's about heard it obviously they're gonna possibly be affected by it which you know it's just how i am it's like i make even sometimes with my own problems trauma issues or whatever even sometimes myself i will um give myself shit and that's also another thing i feel like makes you a little bit stronger if you can dish yourself then really what someone what someone else going to do like if you've already like said all your insecurities and paid out yourself and you know pay pay out the way i talk or look or whatever then what someone else got on you like you've already laid it all out on the table like, what are they going to do like pick you know an object that's already been laid out on the table you know it's like if you lay down like all these different weapons but you've like already used all these weapons on yourself it's like what are they going to pick up a hammer and hit you with it when you've already hit yourself over the head with that hammer so like, what are they going to do like so yeah that's just a lot of times how i deal with um my problems I mean, I don't, you know, don't always take my advice as like, as I said, I'm not perfect. I'm, I have plenty of flaws and stuff. But when you, when you go through life and you have other people that you trusted or loved or people that you thought would have your back and they end up turning on you. So, you know, I've had friends that I grew up with and you know friends when, when you get a little bit off tap or whatever oh you you're my brother for life oh oh man like you know and then all of a sudden girls or drugs or whatever takes them away from you you know like people change if they sometimes find a partner you know sometimes they just get so infatuated or whatever with it it's like they just you kind of never see them again they kind of just you know they they get a a little bit of the you know the pussy trap or the booby trap or whatever it's like you know it takes them and then they're gone forever sometimes people you know just have a little cheeky smoke now and again and all of a sudden before you know it like they're just off their face all the time and they just become different people so it's like it, and i mean also you sometimes lose people that you love through obviously death which is just a part of life and unfortunate so it's like if you lose people that were your heroes when you were a kid or family friends whoever like some of these dudes that i had issues with mainly because they just wanted to you know try and put me in their place and i'll just won't be you know i won't be put down i won't you know if someone wants to kick me while i'm down i'll grab their foot and try and you know try and if, if you want to keep me down i'll try and bring you down to that level nothing wrong with a little bit of negative introspection it fit leads to improvement man i don't know why I'd, it's like i need glasses i think it's because brad was writing too much i'm just used to people saying yeah fucking fucking yeah man <laughs> like oh I'd, but yeah but that's that's as well how i look at life in general it's like if i'm not always if i'm not learning educating myself trying to improve myself trying to become a better person for myself and become a better person so then i can help other people be better people and it's like what's the point of being alive what's the point of you know like really i just may as well die if i'm and i've gone through depression quite bad it's been probably a good 18 years or 17 years or something i've been it was sort of my early 20s i started getting bad depression and then about my mid 20s is when really shit anxiety and depression really happened and you know i didn't want to even go to family get togethers and friends who wanted to go to pubs and stuff i just weren't you know i weren't up up for that sort of stuff anymore where when I first was 18 and first like early 20s you know go to town and pubs and just all that stuff but yeah just when you start feeling 
anxious, feeling depressed. It's like you, I'd happily hang around my friends, but I didn't want to go out in public and kind of feel vulnerable or whatever, you know. And especially when you go to town, a lot of times you need to have your wits about you because there's a lot of wankers around. But yeah, when that started happening, and also, yeah, all these all these people that, oh, I love you, man, and you're my brother and stuff like. When you go through a lot of that stuff people don't want to know you anymore you know they're just a lot of people are quite selfish and they don't want to which i don't necessarily blame them you know i don't know how i would deal with if, if the shoes was on the other foot but you know i feel like the type of person i am i would say oh you know instead of going to town and you know taking some drugs and going to listen to duff duff music and jump around like a complete idiot then maybe i will just you know go over to his house or go over to you know invite him to my house and just you know have a couple of quiet drinks and just you know make it a little bit more just just about that person but yeah i mean it, it taught me a lot about life it taught me a lot about mental health you know like how people are how people treat others so yeah you learn from all that stuff definitely can't believe i went over the hour I was struggling there for a bit. Now we're over the hour. I rush off to TikTok. But um, yeah, you know. So really, I mean, I've helped people in life with all sorts of stuff. You know, like uh, I've been on like a bit of a spiritual journey throughout my life here and there. Sometimes it kind of fluctuates. Sometimes I'm. You know, like it's definitely did help my depression in a way, like getting into mindfulness and stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of people in different groups have been sh like struggling. It's like I used to always be this type of person that I'd have plenty of my own issues, but I'd always still put them to the side to help someone else. I remember when we used to drink when like my older brother was still living like you know we we was all living under the one roof and he used to have some of his friends over i'd have some of my friends over you know we'd, we'd have a smoke and have a drink and i remember like you know like especially when people get like that and blokes are together some blokes try and be all macho man randy savage and like oh but then you know like a lot of times as well when you drink or it, it kind of takes away that mask and when when you're with your friends like a lot of people is opening up and i remember a few, quite a few times sit down on like those old garden chairs and at, at one time in particular i definitely remember was people kept on sitting next to me and they were telling me problems and then like i got a bit of the nickname dr phil because like you know people would sit down and tell their problems and it kind of did get to the point where it was a little bit ridiculous and as, as funny as it is people were taking it in turns to come around and like sit there and tell me their problems and me just like trying to talk them through it or whatever it was it was ridiculous but it's like kind of did what is, is what started happening and as i said it was one time in particular that it got to the point that it was like dr phil if there was a camera on no I thought I was probably more like Jerry Springer, but you know, that people like, oh man, you're like Dr. Phil. I'm like, yeah, I'm not that ugly, am I? <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely like um, more like Jerry Springer with the uh, unorthodox way of doing shit. And then, you know, you'd have like drunk people just stumbling around in the background and you're like, you know, you're trying to speak deep and meaningfuls to someone and there's like some dude pissing or yakking behind you or, you know, like just crazy stuff happening around you as you're like trying to help some dude because he's crying about you know what happened when he was 12 or some shit but yeah maybe I, maybe i should have it's probably copyrighted but maybe i should have called this channel the dr phil show or whatever his bloody whatever his channel was or whatever his show was But yeah, no, didn't didn't know. <laughs> I came on here. I'm like, I'm just gonna wing it because I'm. 
the I've got the web the uh, the decent webcam is working. I don't know if there's really much of a change. As I said, I do need to sort out the settings and all the rest of it. But yeah, I just came on here to do this. What I do, what I what I do best. But yeah, I never know what's going to come out. <laughs> it's, it's like you know, it's like I've it's like you eat like you know, all sorts of crazy food and then you throw up. You never know what's going to come out first. So, you know, you just you just go with it. And so far, I've spoke shit. I've spoke shit, and you've got a little bit of shit speaking as well, if you know what I'm saying. Which most of the time I don't know. But yeah, who's still here? Right? Is is everyone like going to sleep and like listening to me? I'm like, you know, like I'm the AM, ASMR. Like I'm like, it's like, oh, oh man, I'm gonna lie down and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drift off to sleep to his lovely tones and sounds and words of wisdom i don't know now i feel like i'm all alone i might have to put the music back on maybe i should spit some raps for everyone oh the old styles he's still here appreciate it Let's bounce around. Oh, yep. Cody's still in the house. Appreciate it, boys. Appreciate you being here. As I said, you know, it's like a random stream. I know, you know, Cody and stuff has been doing his streams lately. Uh, yeah, it's just a bit of a random stream. Get this channel popping. Didn't know who was going to be here. Didn't know if I was going to be here until like you know around about seven o'clock or as i said i was mucking around with the webcam i'm like oh bloody hell i finally worked out how to get it to work i've actually got two of the same webcam because when my logitech camera was having issues i spoke to customer support and they was giving me all this stuff to try to fix it and then they ended up sending me a brand new webcam for nothing so i've got two of the same webcam I was trying to get them both to work tonight, but it was just, I got the one working, and then when I put the second one on, it was just disabling the audio is the issue that I have. It disables my drivers to the audio. So yeah, I ended up just going with the one. I might see if I can get the two going. But also, I do have the, the inbuilt webcam. It's just I want to, like I was saying before, do some painting videos on my hobby channel. So I'd have to use, and I still need to work it out. I'm sure I can eventually. I'd probably use like the laptop inbuilt webcam for talking and stuff, and then have the Logitech webcam. I'd, I'll have to attach it to. Have to work out. I'll, it's got like a screw on the bottom. It's got like you can you know you can. I, don't know. I, I know like this has stuff like that. This is like my little my little tripod. I think Cody might have seen this. This yeah, this is the little this little guy. This is the one that I was using on the dumpster. I just I just thought I probably didn't like disinfect that that after I after I put it on that dumpster. And there I am, manhandling it. I was just checking my channel to see if anyone subbed, but no, they didn't. So if there's any lurkers, they're just lurking, they're jerking and gherkins in the background. Watching, waiting. All right, guys, I might head off, though, because I reckon I'm still, I'm still going to edit a video and need to bring out a Funkin' Hungry video tomorrow. And I do have stuff to do. It's only ten o'clock, but you know, let everyone let everyone get to you know go and have their hot milk and a cookie before bed. Sitting in my armchair with the stream cast to my TV, had a crunchy Easter egg earlier, and washing it down with the rest of my iced coffee. Well, it sounds like you 
sounds like you're set, man. It sounds like you're having a great night. But yeah, cheers. Seriously, guys, I appreciate you always being here. Like, means a lot to me. Jokes aside, it means a lot. And I didn't know that I would have, it's only five people, but I have five people watching. So lurkers or anyone that's not talking, hello. People that might be too shy to talk, I appreciate you being here. But I'll just go, we had, Roger came in. So shout out to Roger the Pirate. Go check out his channel. I'm just putting up a random comment just so you can see who it is. Appreciate you being here. We had Stylesy. Go check out Stylesy. He has a little bit of content, but normally he's just a great bloke that supports all of us. Always a great person in the chat. Always brings some jokes. So appreciate you as always, man. And we have... Have to scroll down we had cody the aussie alistair fan brony go check out his i've got to put more people on so if you go check out my the channels funkin hungry you go check out this channel i have links to everyone's channels but i do need to throw brad in there and some other people and brian but yeah the, um always support these other guys and then the last person that we had tonight last but not certainly lot certainly not least we had brad strung out go check out his channel he does some great shorts and he's joined us on some lives and stuff so yeah appreciate you all being here i'll do this more on the regular basis probably won't get tongue tied as much now, it's been a little while since i've done a little bit of a loner stream but it's good it's good practice but yeah appreciate it everyone cheers boys for being here much love to you all i will speak to you tomorrow night i'll be a bit a bit a bit that's all folks i'll be doing a monday night madness on funkin hungry 